this video, what I'm going to do is record the Art Odyssey, Odyssey and basically construct a pseudo track. Uh, all the musical elements will come from the ARP, but uh, I'm going to use something else for the drums. I'm just not that keen. I probably could get the drums out of the ARP, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to use something else for the drums. So, so every musical part, but not the drums. I'll be recording um, into Cubase. Uh, I'll just do one part at a time, and you'll see that operation as well. Um, and once I've got enough parts done, I'll come back and we'll have a listen to the individual parts and then I'm probably going to do like some little arrangement um, so you can hear everything in context to finish the video. Uh, the purpose of this uh, video is to, does the ARP collapse? Does the sound of the ARP collapse when you start using, using it multi, multiple times? So you can imagine I've got like maybe 10, 12 ARP Odysseys. Could I do an entire track with with these uh, a dozen ARPs and still have a track sounding okay? Well, we'll soon find out. Um, now, I have kind of done this sort of thing. I tried it once with uh, a synth we shall not name. <clears throat> um, and it was just fat and fat and double fat and I just couldn't even get like two two or three sounds out of it. And in fact, the, the one that I had, the Moog <coughs> that I owned, um, uh, it was the Voyager. Um, I just I never was able to use it in a single track uh, once. So, but I have been able to use this um, quite a lot actually, but I've never done this type of experiment with it. So without further much ado, we shall have a look through the, hmm, the square, the magical square window.
Now, what I gather from this so far um, is the this Art Odyssey is a, a very versatile synth. I know that when I was messing around, and I know from playing about with it anyway, uh, I could have done a, a techno track, a house track, a deep house track, uh, an ambient track, um, drum and bass, uh, e even uh, you know if I was in an indie band, this is a ideal synth for uh, indie bands. It's it's kind of quite rock, uh, depending on what you do, but it, and it distorts really well. So I could have got more parts in here if I wanted to. What I really notice is that the sound doesn't collapse. You know, um, I can remember using some workstations and uh, you you know. Piling, piling the sounds on, and the sound just starts to shrink and it starts to collapse, you know, like a gravity well. Um, and this has been holding up really well. If you don't own uh, an analog synth, but you've got a DAW, and you're just looking to sort of explore, but you're, you're just going to buy one synth, and it happens to be a mono, this is not a bad choice at all. You know, because you've got samplers in your DAW, you can sample notes and make pads, like I have here. That's just one note. Um, so you can do all that sort of thing. And basically, it's like having a dozen art odysseys. Um, so, obviously, the drums was not the ARP, but everything else was. So I'll just go through the individual parts. And then once I've done this, I'm going to do like a minute and a half, two minute arrangement, just so you can hear all the parts in context. The pad, string, whatever. Oh, not the drums just now. So obviously that's playing live. I put it into Cubase sampler track. Oh, we've got the distort sound, I'll turn that off. Right, so, and I was going to I was gonna double up the pads to make it bigger, but I changed my mind and, and kind of did a violin little bit like this. It's not a violin, but it's in the ballpark, you know? It's a taste, an organic taste. So there's that. The plinky, plinky sound. I double tracked that for no other reason than I just felt like it. I'm not going to bother taking the effects off. It, everything in this is just one reverb unit. Well, maybe two reverb units I'm using and one delay. Pretty much, that's it. A little bit of EQ here and there, but really not that much. So there was that. We've got the, this lead thing. And for the second half it changed. It, the line doesn't change, I just switched the, uh, one of the oscillators, made it louder, brought the other one down. Right, so um, the bass sound, this is what I started with and this dictated what the rest of the track. If I'd done like a techno-y thing, it, it would have come out as a techno track. But I think this is quite a good choice anyway, this, whatever the, I don't know what, this is New Wave or something. Uh, it, it was good for like doing little melodic lines, you know. Techno would be just kind of like quite monotone. So I think this maybe helped. Um, I probably subconsciously made that decision to allow for bringing pads and m melodic lines in. A little bit of filter. Uh, fizz synth. And here it is without verb and delay. So 
there's that. The ARP line. Because I can't say arpeggio, 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 yes, that's it. I've always had difficulty with that one. A little bit of filter. Okie dokie. Um, spacey effects. This one, I didn't record video when I did this one. Just a little added extra. Um, this one, distort. This went through the retroverb distortion. And it's just the filter sweeping up. And it kind of sounds like brass. and that, Like a movie type brass. But it's just one note. I do like that one. What's going to happen now, I'll just be a little bit of an arrangement and the video is going to end. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll do another video. I'm going to do another video with some type of synth uh, along the same lines. That'll be the next video. All right then, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.